Jimmy, today on Cartoonist Kayfabe, we are looking at what I consider to be, at least right now in 2024, this is the most important comic book medium discovery of the 21st century. Let's put it under the microscope. Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We have an incredible video for you today. First, please check out the YouTube channel. We have more than 1,700 videos uh, available to you right now. We might have talked about your favorites. Hit the magnifying glass on the front page of the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel. Give it a search. Check out the episodes where we talk about your faves. Uh, we have a Patreon, and the King Kayfabers on our Patreon get access to all the videos before anybody else, and they are hanging out with us as we record the videos in a live stream recording uh, session. Uh, so support the channel that way if you are so inclined, and get the scoop early on the things that we talk about. And we are on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Uh, if you dig the channel, uh, it would support us a lot if you follow the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel, hit the bell, all that good stuff. And without further ado, Jimmy, let's jump right into the Frank Johnson book, uh, Secret Pioneer of American Comics. What an incredible discovery uh, that has occurred, I think, uh, in, a, in about... Uh, the comics, people started to find out about this in about 2016, 2017. Dan Nadell's name is mentioned as uh, being one of the people that sort of happened upon it. Uh, take a look at the back of the book. Um, Astonishing historical and artistic discovery. A 2,300-page protographic novel begun by a quote-unquote weekend cartoonist in 1928 and continuing over the next 50 years. Ladies and gentlemen, this this is this is uh, this is five years, six years before the first comic book, and even those comic books were not issue-length pieces. This is pulling from strips, but you, you get the picture. Uh, when Frank Johnson, an itinerant musician and shipping clerk, died in 1979, he left behind a startling discovery. More than 2,300 notebook pages of comics and 131 unbound drawings, among them a long, continuous story beginning in the earliest surviving notebook dated 1928, before the existence of comics, Following the exploits of his cast of characters across 50 years until Johnson passed away, during this lifelong project, Johnson invented in private many of the conventions and tropes that define comics storytelling, effectively enacting an alternative secret history of the comics medium. This collection is the first ever publication of Johnson's work, includes uh, Wally's Gang, a 50-year magnum opus chronicling the humorous, cliffhanging adventures of a group of bachelor friends, the Bowser Boys, a seamy, darkly slapstick depiction of Bohemian street life that could be considered the first uh, underground comic story. Juke Boys, absurd, self-reflexive graphic experimentation. The people who brought us this book, Jimmy, uh, is uh, curator and historian Christopher Byrne and fine artist and graphic novelist Keith Mayerson, who have not only brought this astounding work into the light, but provide... Uh, historical background and analysis as well can't disable the power of my label this is published by fantagraphics keith mayerson you know him from dangerous drawings is he horror hospital unplugged is his uh his graphic novel yes i think he did something else too but that's the one that i came across in my in my reading and that's about it and even dan Klaus doesn't call himself a graphic novelist he's <laughs> he's coming into this from a fine arts perspective and uh what we get up front is and a foreword by Byrne talking about how, how he came into uh, knowledge of this material and it's past hands it, uh, it was a step grandson had custody of all of these notebooks it's, it's, it's a ton of notebooks and was just kind of sitting on them and then you know meets somebody or whatever uh, Dan Nadell is sort of discovers it you know, from some other groups that have it. Somebody bought the pages off the grandson and then warehoused it at some university. Right now, it's a, it's a, Karen Green has it at, oh, yeah. uh, at Columbia. Good hands. Great hands. I, and it's on, like, long-term loan. Um, you know, pause here. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go keep ahead. going. But it's, I think there's probably a lot of this stuff like this yeah. where it's like, 
you're cleaning out a house, you know, your, your, your step grandfather died, you're cleaning out a house or whatever. And it's like, we're just throwing stuff out. Totally. This stuff has to get, it's paper. Yep. Paper just gets thrown out, man. You know, like, like, like I've cleaned out a house and there are people that come through that do it professionally. And it's like, this is a dumpster item if you're not careful. So I read, I read the back piece to you, right? 2,300 pages. I'll break your heart. Ready to have your heart broken? It starts off with notebook 91. The first 90 notebooks are not in existence anymore. They're dust. Buy our books. Keep the videos coming to you on a regular basis. Jimmy has Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive. Street Angel Princess of Poverty. True Crime Funnies. 1986 zine. BW zine. Get those at his website. Hulk Grand Design. Treasury is out there. Trade paperback coming soon. I have Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus. X-Men Grand Design Trilogy. Red Room Crypto Killers comes out the end of February. Anti-Social Network. Red Room Trigger Warnings and the Switchblade Shorties comic strip coming to you online on a daily basis. Now that we're done uh, showing off our books, get them and back to the video. Now, wow. if they're pulling the greatest kayfabe over on us and just some dude drew this last year and, and they're they're telling a tale. Oh, I tip my hat if that's the case. We'll, we'll know that's the case if after the books come out that like they rediscover the first bunch of books. Well, you know what? I, I wonder if... Do they say that all those are gone? Because I, I they wonder do if say they, they're gone. Yeah. Oh, see, yeah. that's a bummer. Yeah, they, they, they are gone. Because you'll see in that directory, I mean, is it, should we believe 92 to 109 are missing? Or is that something where it's like, we're going to curate a little bit? Because you want a hot shot. Totally. And they do talk about, like, uh, <laughs> books number nine, 109 to 120 were, like, artistic exercises. But I do think some of those are in here. Because here's the other thing it's paper, it's sitting in a box. Yeah. Who knows? In a garage, in an attic in a basement. Right. Like, it's not just thrown out. There are fires, water, a lot of ways you can lose this stuff. Absolutely. And now, the book 90, this is when he's 16 years old. So, he, those those other things, and it's 1928, like, those other things, do you remember those little composition tablets that you would get in elementary school, like, one a month or one a week or whatever? It was the shittiest paper ever. Yes. Uh, dude, this guy's wife had no idea that he was doing this. Uh, it was completely uh, foreign to her when, 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 he, when he passed. And I imagine, like, there's a guy that lives behind me, and you just hear that welding fucking <laughs> thing going. I, like, what is he welding? <laughs> he does not want to be in the house with his old lady, this motherfucker, man. I just, I just uh, watched Burn After Reading, the Comb Brother movie. That guy's making a sex, uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> sex chair. This motherfucker is just, well, he does not want to be in the house with his old lady. And I imagine that a part of this is uh, that deal. This this Frank uh, Johnson fella, alcoholic. So uh, they sort of make allusions to him kind of tying his sobriety to just kind of keep him busy with this. Uh, there is a period of time, like an eight-year span of time, where he puts down a story and picks it back up. And they think that he was probably on like a, a nice fucking long bender. That's interesting. Sometimes you'll hear about addicts have sort of like a, like a nervous energy. They need to be doing something. Jimmy, like... You know, I, I don't do shit, right? Like, like you never see me drink, like, like nothing. I have compulsive tendencies, and I think I'm an addict, and and I'm a scared to death to touch anything because I, I'm a compulsive person. We I always say I can't keep junk food here because I'll eat a whole thing of Pringles. Yeah, right. Yep, yep. I have that. Um, we always say like artists, especially comic book artists, OCD, right? Right. And it's, and it's like an undiagnosed half joke, except that it's kind of true. We all have those tendencies, and I never thought about that. Like. And so many cartoonists have alcohol issues, right. especially historically. Like, man, you read about these guys that that, that die of alcoholism. Um, man, I never connected those two things. Right. Uh, so then you have your Keith <clears throat> Mayerson part. And I guess he teaches comics or something at, at School of Visual Arts and has done so for a long time. But... You know, I, I, I don't, what's his, what's his, that horror hospital thing or whatever. Is that cool? Is it it's good? good. Yeah. He draws it. The breakthrough for me with that book is he draws in different styles throughout it. Mm -hmm. And that really spoke to me. Yeah. Here's, here's, here's my only uh, criticism of this material. Thank you so much, Keith Mayerson. Thank you so much, Chris Byrne, for your contribution to like bring this out into the light on future volumes. I need to hear what Dan Nadell has to say. Like I need people who, who have way more skin in the game. Uh, in terms of the comics medium, to weigh in on this. Because, like, we could put our own opinions to this ourselves here. I need to, I need Karen Green to speak on it uh, in a future volume. I want Art Spiegelman to write a piece on this. Uh, Chris Ware, maybe. Like, I 
Thank you guys, but I just know that both of these dudes are going to have their stink on every volume, and I don't want that. I think it'll 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 fail because the beauty of these collections of comic strips, the Frank Kings and all that stuff, uh, is the front and back matter. Right. The comic content of this is almost irrelevant to like the amazing discovery of all of this material. Like as a great outsider artist, uh, you can. Um, you, you can build a crazy mystique by just having some volume, even if it's no good. Um, what Mayerson does is he ties it well into the Henry Darger, um, Daniel Johnston type <clears throat> idea, breaks down what outsider art is. I'll tell you this. There's more of this stuff out there, oh, and totally. not just this artist. I know of a guy who has several thousand pages that his father drew. Hopefully some of that will see the light at some point. Uh, but also there were cartoonists that would be syndicated, not syndicated. They would make strips in their local papers. I right. mean, there were thousands. Newspapers were everywhere and comics were huge. So a lot of people dreamt of that. Right. And they only made it as far as their local paper, in which case there may not be archives. Yeah. But also there are literally hundreds of comic strips like that that people really haven't poured over yet to be like, you know what, this guy's a gem. We didn't realize it at the time, but right. this little backwoods newspaper had something special. Let's collect these. Um, and you see more and more of that coming up, and I think more and more of that will continue to come up. But you are fighting time because it's paper. Right. You know, like these things are getting not digitized and lost. So hopefully we will see more of these kind of outsider cartoonists. Now, uh, the superstar of this package is uh, Kayla E., who uh, did, did the design work for this thing. Choosing, choosing this, like, feel this right here, Jimmy. Yeah. You, you, it's, uh, it, it feels like those That's old really shitty uh, co composition notebook band. Like, how do Great you even production. know what to ask uh, for? And it's all uh, it's all direct scans. That's the, the genius of this book, the very four important, color. Very important. Very wow. important. So the very first story is, like, it's a long one. It's, uh, it's called um, The Bowser Boys. And I, I do think it's the one piece that is in ink. Does that look like ink to you? Yeah, it looks like ink. And, uh, it's, Boy, and that's old school, like pen and, and, and an inkwell, you know? Right. Yeah, I guess was the ball, was the ballpoint Dude, like, that comes later. Yeah, way later. Like those inkwells would be part of the desks, right. you know, like in the in the twenties. That's that's crazy. You'd on have top you, of that shitty paper, ink, ink all down your sleeve and stuff. I was talking with David. Dude, you were part of the thread, man. Where I was like, Cho, you gotta like this just came in. Like you gotta get your hands on it within a half hour. He was like, Dude, I bought two copies. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about, like, the way he draws the drunk, drunk eyes is so good. You know, like, you could imagine that in, like, a Zero Zero anthology or, or uh, anything like that. This made me fucking laugh out loud, some of these bits. The way that these strips break down are weird, like, because, like, sometimes the punchline will be, like, after one panel, but sometimes it'll be after four. So uh, it's sort of all over the place where, that, where that's concerned. Um there will be parts where, like, okay, yeah, they see the, they see the girl uh, taking a bath, and then they go, hey, what you running away for, man? She can't see you. And they're like, I'm afraid of the soap and water. You know, it's 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 uh, it's cheesy. <laughs> like, like the, the writing and all that, like, it's sort of, it's not the point. It's the point that the guy did this much stuff. And uh, everything that I've read so far, because it's a big one, is, is pretty good. It's 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 really I mean it's solid solid cartooning. Now this is a piece that he did like over a big chunk of time, but then we could uh, see what kind of pen is that, dude? Starting a not archival inks. Right? I don't know what that is. That's that's. I think it was probably a black ink that that uh, that got fucked over from too much exposure, or just the ink uh, perished or something. Yeah, that may be something one of our uh, older historian fans, art historians, can weigh in on, you know, what would create that look. This is this is really amazing. Totally. And this is the part where... Um... Okay, uh, following is the first surviving volume of comics by Frank Johnson, Wally's Gang number 91, created in 1928, when he was just 16 years old. Boom. Working in pencil. Look at that, man. Drawing a bike. Bike's so hard to draw. Yeah. Two panels per page. <clears throat> pretty pretty rough stuff, but, like, very cool that he did it, you know? You know, it is... It Obviously, it's simple in a lot of ways, but it also has stuff where, like, we're getting different values and textures. Like, 
And it looks good, like the aged page, giving that little bit of yellow patina sure. helps. You know, it's 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 a nice presentation here too. And he's drawing, you know, that's your Barney Googles and the aesthetic of the day that you would see in the newspaper strips for for sure. Wow, it's neat. And Man, it's great that it has all the makes me wonder about things like he's 16 like when does the alcoholism start to enter right because i mean people were drinking at 16 you know totally. who knows um man and also like prohibition would have been you know like he would have maybe encountered that at some point right <laughs> look at that that's pretty complex comics and comics yeah man no this guy this guy is fucking sharp dude these are tight this is this is uh maybe a later volume there but he got pretty high level there totally and this this comes Away, ways later. This is 41, 42. And this other piece is uh, 28. That's fantastic that he stuck with it like throughout his life. To his dying day. Record. Into the 70s, man. You know, like, good stuff here. Yeah, 1942. You know, the other place where you might find some things comparable is there are cartoonists out there that have uh, treasure chests of their childhood com the, 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 the Seth has comics that he made when he was 16. Right. How about it, Seth? I know. This Larson, is a nice presentation. Rick Veach. Well, Larson's, I think, might be gone, sadly. Rick, Rick Veach has his, man. He puts up stuff uh, on online. Rick, let's let's get him, dude. Alex Ross, I mean, he showed some off at the Warhol Museum exhibition, so that stuff's out there. Dude, did he get hold of some uh, Basil Wolverton, a little Powerhouse Pepper influence? It's really interesting because Fantagraphics has published some... Oh, man, when he starts putting lines down, that's that's something. That's that's pretty interesting. Almost like new language that he's introducing there to yeah, his style. Yeah, 1945, this round. But the Wolverton books that Fana has put out, they have a lot of bio and a lot of his, like, all the work that exists. So you're right. seeing, like, his childhood and development stuff. And it's it makes me wonder, like, was this guy rejected from somewhere? Was he, like, turning these things up, you know, trying to get work as a cartoonist? I don't... I, I mean, this is pencils. This is... Yeah, it's, it's not, nothing, you know, not like, quite there, but like, man, I, I would think that it's much further along than a lot of people. You know, it's almost like the tool is what you're missing for the finish. Or ab something. Ab absolutely, man. And, uh, you know, growing up here in, in Pittsburgh, I have met very, very creative people who are so humbled and like, uh, you know, movies, oh, those are made in California. You can't, you can't make a movie here and, and, uh, sure they have a hobby or something, but that's, that's like... That's what it is. They like they can't conceptualize that you could actually you can actually be the one to get paid and prosper and do all that stuff like that. You know that's something extra. Uh, this is this is a deep compulsion and and the fact that uh, I don't know if it's in this stuff. I think that they made allusions to it's in the future volume, like even from like the material from the seventies, where there's like fourth wall breaking stuff where the characters are talking about the creator and, and say like saying stuff like, oh, he must really love us to spend all this time with us and, and things like that. So, I mean, this guy is completely in his own world. It's kind of like that uh, uh, Mar Marwin call or whatever, that guy that, like... Mm -hmm. made, made the little miniatures in his backyard. Yeah. Yeah, he just has a, has a whole world. Or, uh, the thing that I've been fantasizing about, and I joke about it in jest on our weeklies, where I'm like, I've entered my Henry Darger stage, and Darger had Vivian Girls, a 15,000-page manuscript. That has never been published. And uh, I remember joking, like, where's the comic version of that? that? This is the comic version of that. They do a good job having the dates in the bottom corner. Very That's important. some information I'm happy to see is very clear. Yeah. It's amazing how this stuff has evolved, too. Because if this is published 20 years ago... Good point. It's probably black and white. You know, I mean, it's, it has to be a relatively expensive book to produce in four color like this, an artist edition, if you will. It's a good point. They they bring that up in the, in early, where um, it, you know, it would be stuff like uh, the guy who did that snowman. That's so awesome. Totally, the guy who did that snowman kids book. That was like some of the earliest mm -hmm. bigs. We have printing that uh, you know used something that wasn't ink. So man, Doesn't I, I want to know so much more. Me too, and and unfortunately, just like Darger, like if you read one Darger book, you read them all because there is no real record. You know, there's not that much. I I do have a feeling that that's the case here. Yeah, which is why the curator and that Mayerson dude, like you gotta you gotta allow yourself not have the ego. Thank you, but we need 
we need comics intellectuals. We need Jeet here to write something about this. Yeah, for sure. Love whenever these panels deviate from like a two figure, you know, there's so much of the kind of the figure stuff, which is fine. Right. But it's really cool when he goes outside of that and tries something different. This is that um, dull pencil. Like, this is that pencil that you, uh, you sharpen it on the built in pencil sharpener in your basement. You mm. remember those, man? You, did your old house have that? I did, and it was a great pencil sharpener, man. Yeah. It was really, yeah, it was, I missed that pencil sharpener. So I, I, should, I should go home and take that thing off the wall. And... Heavy duty, man. <laughs> and they were, they're just like that inkwell, yes. right? They were built into the shelving of uh, those old basements. Yeah, I put a lot of miles on that pencil sharpener. Yeah, this guy does some really interesting stuff, and I wonder if, you know, you talk about, like, future volumes of, like, fourth wall breaking stuff. I wonder if you do get some auto bio stuff working its way in there. Right. Um, you know, I, I want everybody that's involved with this to, to write about it. Like Karen Green put it in context. Like, what are those later? What, what, what aren't we seeing? You know, like, what do you know about this? Exactly. And, and who has gone down the rabbit hole, like trying to figure out more about this guy's life? Cause yeah, we need people to do Jurassic. that, you know? Yeah, exactly. People do it. So, uh, investigate this. It's fascinating. And, you know, I don't have, like, the, the dates and stuff in front of me, but I wonder, like, what he's pulling from if it's, like, what the popular strip of that era is. You right. know, like, is he working things in from, you know, where you could recognize, like, oh, he loved Bushmiller, or, you know, the, the period with Fritzy or something, you know? Like, I wonder about that kind of stuff, too, like, how it stacks up with what is contemporary of when he's drawing it. And, right. you know, you think, what info do we have when we have those dates? Yes. That's a good bit. You know, we can kind of look at, well, what's being published in, in newspaper comics in forty you know, 45, 46, whatever the date is on each of these pieces, you know, you could kind of look at it through that lens too and see like, what's he looking at? What's he bringing in? How's he evolving? This is that shit, man. Like, uh, you know, if you're real about this, you're doing it even without a record contract. And this guy produced thousands and thousands of pages with nobody even reading it. Man. Just for himself. Nobody knew this material existed. And now we all do. It feels voyeuristic. You yeah, know, there, like that component is there. I, 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 I think it's important still, you know, shit. You know, what's funny is like we're talking this on our live episode about, you know, wills and intellectual property and what happens after you leave. And you wonder, like, did this guy want this stuff destroyed? You know what I mean? On, like, on, on Henry and Henry Dodger's uh, deathbed, um, I think he, he was like, he said something about like burn it. Yeah, and then they were like, "No, no, no! It's it's great. Like you know, it's it's a uh, it's incredible material." Blah blah blah. And he and he said something like, "You know, too little, too late, or or uh, took you guys this long to find out, or like like some kind of like romantic kind of thing." Where acknowledging his own genius, which interesting is like, uh, what are these guys called? Like the something boys, uh, the Wally's gang. So it's a bunch of dudes, and like Vivian girls is like the same clan of chicks doing doing stuff so it's like you have your that's the other great piece right like that you have these like reoccurring characters that survive the entire work that's pretty sharp yeah that little you, do, you do see him continuing to like evolve it's pretty strong work i wonder what his day job was yeah shipping clerk and then what does itinerant mus musician mean i guess he travels like maybe a backup musician in bands yeah, it doesn't speak to like the graphic, the visual art part. Yeah, none of it. This is just, you know, he has some facility and just kind of kept it rocking. Like, look, that's complicated. It's pretty cool. He's switching out of this four panel grid. Yeah, we're looking at 1947 materials. I absolutely love the, the presentation. Well done to uh, to Fanographics, to the designer, to whoever gets credit for actually conceiving of this. Wow. It's my favorite cover. Brilliant. And it's, you know, it's designed. He's got his little. Yeah, straight edges. Straight edges and shit. <laughs> Watch us like wax all over this and we find out that it's a big old Seth K Fabe or something. Well, you know what? If you're going to do, what is this, uh, 600 plus pages? Like, <laughs> again, I tip my hat to you. Right. Because it's easy to do this poorly. Right. So, you know, I'll, I'll give credit to whoever produced this. It's hard to believe that, you know, it's, it's crazy. We live in a world now, an age where it's like, can't be a hundred percent sure this was an outside. You don't know what you're actually looking at hardly ever. Right. And they and they use the right names, right? Like Danny Dell's a name that you would want to name drop for something like this. And certainly Karen Green. That is true. Now that's they, true. They say that it's there. So, um, 
so you could see it. Yeah, you know what? Some something like that. I can't imagine Karen Green, whose profession is tied to this, would let her name be used for a hoax. We just turned uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe into a conspiracy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is like in my head, it's like, well, how? Yeah, like you would have to fool both of them, which means you would have to have some age notebooks that you put this in, or just put their names in a damn thing, and you know, it's it ain't there. I think. I think Nadell may have published a little bit of this in like Gansfield or somewhere. One of the King Cavers, K Fabers mentioned that. So it's possible that, that, you know, he has had some association with this yeah. and I hope he will write about it more. Yeah. I think, I think that's, that's the essential part. Got your little bios, bios of, of your guys. Uh, that's the essential part. This is fantastic. And I think everybody should have it as just like an amazing comic book discovery. I do, I do stand by it as of, the year 2024 AD. I think this is the most incredible discovery in the comics medium of the 21st century. Uh, but in order to make this series, which I hope they continue and we're doing our diligence right now, right? We're doing our part to uh, promote, promote this book. Everybody go out and buy it. Uh, but in order for this series to be a great series of books beyond just the craft of Frank Johnson is we got to get the real writers to, uh, pontificate and, and and lend some some credence to this material man give me jeet here give me uh dan, give me dan adel give me karen green give me gary groth you know people who have had skin in the game for a super long time uh give me the person that's a scholar on henry darger you know yeah. like, like how does this contextually fit in with another outsider semi-comic style artist yeah presumably man just gotta you know if they want to do it all it's got to be three to five more of these things and i'm here for all of them it's a it's an amazing book and man did they do a good job on favors, it. Like, go? yes. subscribe to the youtube channel hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available we are on the road to 100,000 subscribers thank you very much and if you get anything out of these videos if you dig what we produce make sure that you follow the channel and uh, it helps us out a lot the videos are ultimately brought to you by the books that we make, but we have a Patreon and the Patreon is there for you to mitigate the kayfabe effect, become one of our biggest supporters and you get all the videos before anybody else. You also uh, have access to the live stream recording session as we produce these videos. Link in the description below for uh, the, the Patreon. We have more than 1700 videos out there and we might have talked about some of your favorite comics so make sure you hit the magnifying glass on the front page of the kayfabe youtube channel check out the channel pop in your favorite titles check out those episodes if we haven't talked about your favorite comics then by all means put something in the comments so that we can push those books a little bit higher on our uh to read piles ultimately the videos are brought to you by the books that we make right now i've been working on switchblade shorties which is my daily comic strip you can find it on all of our social media platforms the kayfabe stuff uh, my own personal uh, social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. There's a dedicated Switchblade Shorties Instagram, and it's also uh, on Webtoon in its uh, full archive. The Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is uh, is going quick, and uh, it is 45 bucks on Amazon at the moment. Uh, so scoop it up if you haven't. Uh, it's almost freaking half off, so you can't beat that with a stick. Best book I made to date. X-Men Grand Design Trilogy Trade Paperback contains all of my X-Men Grand Design works. Uh, it's the one place where you could get it all inside of one handy dandy cover. Red Room Crypto Killers is coming out at the end of February, part of a trilogy of trade paperbacks, uh, but you don't need to start with the first one because each contains four self-contained stories. So if you grab this first, Crypto Killers, then uh, at a later time, you could read the Anti-Social Network or Trigger Warnings. Jimmy, why don't you let the people know what's out there? I have Street Angel, Deadly Squirrel Alive, and Street Angel, Princess of Poverty, both available right now from Image Comics. These are also self-contained. Totally, one is black and white, one is full color. Uh, the Homeless Ninja on a Skateboard, perfect for the action comics or superhero comics fan in your life. The big news for me is the self-published comics, True Crime Funnies, the 1986 zine, and the BW zine celebrating the 80s black and white explosion. These are self-published. You can get them on my website, jimrug.com, or my Patreon, patreon.com slash jimrug. They've been out of print and unavailable. They will be back and available March 6th. So if you missed those, March 6th, you can pick those up. And Hulk Grand Design. This is a treasury-sized edition out of print. However, the trade paperback coming out in May this year, and that is available now for pre-order. So let Marvel know they need to keep these things in print by pre-ordering that one wherever you pre-order books. 
the books are the most important way to kind of keep things uh, on on the on the tracks. But there are some direct ways to support Cartoonist Kayfabe. Jimmy, let the people know. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. There you have it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, support the channel, keep the vids rocking. Jimmy, give them the final marching orders, and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.